great ideas, we are great ideas are ideas that solve a problem in a unique way, usually happen when two old ideas meet together for the first time. So great ideas are not new ideas. They are usually a combination of existing ideas. And that's where brainstorming is powerful because it brings together people with different experiences so they can all merge their ideas together. So that's where design thinking becomes effective because it promotes that collaborative approach. Bring people from different parts of the organization together to bring in their different knowledge and their different expertise and provide their input into how you're going to solve a problem. And by combining those ingredients together, you can come up with new and creative ways to solve a problem. One thing that we have learned over the years is that that process doesn't work with everyone. So we have developed our own variation that also can work well with introverts. So we can ask people to individually think about 10 or 15 ways in which they can address the problem, do that ahead of time, and then meet as a group, share their ideas, and then engage into a more structured brainstorm. So a combination of individual idea generation and combined group idea generation can work really well. It's all about putting yourself in your user's shoes. Spend time with your users. Ask them questions. Think ahead, what do you want to learn? And draft some interview questions. And then engage in a conversation. Don't make it into an interview, engage in a conversation, but be prepared. What do you want to learn? Be a good listener. Um, try to listen to the stories that your user is going to share with you. Ask them about the last time they have faced a challenging situation and how they address that challenging situation. That's a way for you to learn about your user. If they are willing to let you observe them while they go through their everyday life, that's a great way to get deeper insights. If you start discovering what is the problem that you want to solve, and they let you solve that problem for them, or work with them to solve that problem, that's a great way to really understand what the problem is. When you observe them, you see what they actually go through. But when you actually do it, that's when you can really understand how difficult some things may be, or what are the emotions that some challenges are creating. I may tell you that changing the tire of my car is difficult, but in order for you to understand why it's difficult, you would probably want to do it yourself. Or I may tell you that I find a particular task challenging, but you may be able to better appreciate how challenging it is when you try to do it yourself. You want something that you can take back to your user, and your user can interact with it. They can feel it. They can play with it. They can use it one way or another. So the thing about quick and inexpensive ways that you can make your early idea usable, so you can go back to your user, your customer, and get feedback. And that feedback now is giving you the information. Is this a good idea or is this a bad idea? Oftentimes, from your, the, your user's reaction, you may discover that the problem that you thought they had is not there, and they have a different problem. But you will also learn more about what they want, what their preferences are. So you're using this process of generating ideas and taking them back to your user and getting feedback as a way to refine your understanding of the problem, but to also refine your idea. In order for ideas to be viable, the economics need to work. If it's a new product idea, you need to build a viable business model. But your idea may involve changing an internal process within an organization. So you need to understand what are the resources that you need to bring together and what is the case that you will need to make to other people to convince them to change that process. If we are working on a new product idea, the first question is, what is the value proposition? Write down the value proposition. The second one is, who is going to be your customer, your customer segment? 
define your customer segment. Third one is, how are you going to reach them? And the fourth one is, how are you going to make money? Now, the business model canvas has nine elements, but I have identified the first four that you need to address. Now, once you have this, the value proposition is something that you test in your direct interaction of your user with your prototype. Through their reaction, what is the value proposition that they see? Does it match your value proposition? The customer segment. Once you define your customer segment, the users that you talk to must belong in the customer segment you have defined. So if I believe that my customer segment are teenagers, and I'm talking to my colleagues at Stanford and sharing my idea to my colleagues at Stanford, there is a misalignment. If I'm targeting teenagers, the customers that I'm going to be testing my prototype with need to be teenagers. The third one is, how are you going to reach them? That's an interesting one. So if my assumption is I'm going to reach them at the, at the mall, then try to go to the mall and find your users there. The fourth one, pricing. When you introduce a prototype, you can tell them. And when this becomes a full product, this is the price that we're going to charge. And people are going to react. So the, fundament the idea is there are four basic elements of the business model that you need to prototype early. Value proposition, customer segment, channel of how you're going to find the customer, and revenue, how you're going to make money. Make sure that as you start prototyping and testing your prototype, you do that in a way that is consistent with those elements of the business model. And that's how you can prototype a business model. There are some problems that are not solvable. You may not find a technology that is going to solve a particular problem. But what you want to do is discover that quickly. So the methodology doesn't necessarily generate better ideas than competing methodologies, if there are competing methodologies. It's just that this methodology allows you to test your ideas quickly to see which ones hold promise. Creativity is not rocket science. Creativity is a structured, systematic way to solve problems. So the first thing that I would like to tell to executives and organizations, if you are a successful executive in an organization, you are successful because you are a good problem solver. So if you are a good problem solver, you are creative. Creative doesn't mean you are Van Gogh or Picasso. They are creative in their own discipline. You can be creative in your own discipline. So if you can solve problems, you can be creative. Mm -hmm.